The skyscrapers going up today are jaw-droppingly, mind-bendingly, breathtakingly tall. Over 350 meters, the Bank of China. Over 450 meters, the Petronas Towers. And now in Taipei, Taiwan, the tallest skyscraper ever built reaches over 500 meters. But none of them would be possible without the lift. Across the globe, lifts move 2 billion people a day. That's the equivalent of the world's entire population every 72 hours. After 20 years of service, a lift will have traveled on average 460,000 kilometers. That's 12 times around the world. But building a lift in a skyscraper poses special challenges. So how do they do it? Type A 101, completed in 2004. This is the world's tallest skyscraper. It soars an incredible 509 meters high, dwarfing every other building around it. And to get to the top of the world's tallest building, you need the world's fastest lifts. This lift accelerates to over 1,000 meters a minute. That's more than 60 kilometers per hour, or as fast as a greyhound at full pelt. Amazingly, this isn't the lift's top speed. But if it went any faster, it would hurt your ears. These lifts whisk 24 passengers at a time from the ground floor to the 89th in little more than half a minute. And incredibly, they do it using the same amount of electricity as a single light bulb. The secret of how lifts manage to do so much work but use so little power usually lies hidden from view. Happily, on London's Lloyd's building, the lifts are mounted on the outside, revealing how they work. The cables supporting the lift run up to the top of the shaft through a set of wheels called sheaves and then back down to a massive metal counterweight. As the lift rises, the counterweight descends. In principle, it's just like a kid's seesaw. The counterweight weighs nearly the same as the lift when it's half full. So all the motor has to do is move the additional weight of one or two passengers. Moving passengers efficiently is essential to a lift, but an even bigger concern is safety. To find out more, we've come to the historic town of Gien in central France. Because here we find the largest lift manufacturer in the world, Otis. They built the lifts for the Eiffel Tower in Paris, the CN Tower in Toronto, and the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur. A century and a half ago, it was Alicia Graves Otis who demonstrated the world's first safety lift and, at a stroke, made modern skyscrapers possible. And every new design is tested inside this 40-meter-high drop tower. So what happens if a cable snaps? Contrary to popular belief, each lift is supported not by one, but by multiple cables. But how many cables could break without the lift plummeting to the ground? Let's, for instance, say there are, as an example, six steel cables. You could cut through five of them, and the one that's left will hold your lift up. And you could hang another lift on the bottom of it as well, and it will still hold up. In Gien, they're testing a new system of flat steel belts to replace the more conventional cables. Just three millimeters thick, these belts, they say, are as strong as traditional cables, but take up less space, weigh 20% less, and last three times as long. Attached to each lift is a governor rope, which doesn't carry any load, but moves with the lift car. 
This governor rope runs over its own wheel, the sheave at the top of the shaft. If this starts spinning too fast, showing that the car is out of control, then the sheave automatically stops. This stops the governor rope, which in turn pulls on the brake, bringing the lift car to a halt. And if for some remote chance the brake fails, there's a heavy-duty shock absorber at the bottom of the shaft. It works like a giant buffer cushioning the car, but they very much hope it won't come to that. In modern lifts, there are other devices to ensure comfort and safety. A lift may have an infrared beam, which casts an invisible curtain across the doorway. If the beam is broken as the door closes, the door stops and reopens, so you don't get squashed. One of the biggest challenges ever faced by Otis has been designing and installing the lift systems here. The 452-metre-high Patronus Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Over 16,000 people work in this building, relying on the tower's 58 double-deck lifts. This is the largest concentration of double-deck lifts in the world. A double-deck elevator, as the name suggests, are two lift cabs, one above the other, which can serve two floors simultaneously. With double-deck lifts able to carry thousands of passengers an hour, lift technology is allowing architects to build higher and higher. But is there any limit to how high a lift can go. The machinery that's going to hoist the lift, that tends to limit us to what we call a lift rise, that's how far the lift travels, of around about 650 metres. That's almost 150 metres taller than Taipei 101. But by the time the builders get that high, no doubt the lift designers will have risen to the challenge.